see how smooth that looks and, and how even that pattern looks now. There's no scratches in the cylinder at all. And so we should be good. This should work just fine. Well, hello there. This is Ray here with Easy Simple Mechanic. And the beauty of being semi-retired is now I don't have to shave as regular. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to try and see if we can get this cylinder honed on this engine and get the rest of the mating surfaces all cleaned up so we can start assembling. Thank you. Enjoy the episode. This, I wanted to show you guys um, that we got the surface cleaned uh, from the last time I went ahead and used these wire wheels and uh, I got the surface cleaned here where the head gas is going to go. I got the top of the valves all cleaned up so they're nice and clean and also I went ahead and I cleaned a little bit of the rust here. Got all this uh, mating surfaces cleaned up there. On this side I also got the mating surfaces cleaned here. Make sure that's going to seal good and I went ahead and I got the everything cleaned up on the bottom side of this so everything's kind of good to go so what we're going to try and do is we're going to go ahead and try and get the the cylinder uh honed out here so what i have to do is i may have to go ahead and put this in the in the pan again and the reason why is because since i'm not going to pull the crank out i don't want the stuff coming off of the cylinder to go into the bearings or anything on the crank and stuff. So if I set it this way, then everything will kind of run down. As you can see, everything will run down and it'll go down this edge of the block and drain right into the pan. It's kind of windy out here a little bit, so if the wind makes some noise, that's why. I wanted to show you what I picked up at uh, Harbor Freight. I picked up one of these cylinder hones. It's pretty good size. It's between two and seven inches. This this is three and a quarter, so this should work fine. Um, I couldn't find my other one, so I picked that up in case you guys want to see that. I also picked up this little oil can. I didn't have one. I had one a long time ago, and somehow it got lost, but. It's good to be able to have an oil can because you can always uh, use it to, to squirt your oil where you need it. So I picked this up at Harbor Freight. Just need something to, to squirt oil. I didn't want to have to be working right out of the bottle. So I figured this would work well. So let me get some oil in this. This is the four ounce oil can made in India. Wow, I thought everything was made in China nowadays, so we'll see if the things made in India are any better than the ones made in China. I didn't want to bore you guys with all the noise from the, the air drill that I used for scraping all these gaskets, but for doing this uh, cylinder honing, I am going to have to use that drill. So, um, and the uh, compressor is going to have to come on so um, that's going to take a little while, so I'm going to stop this video and then we'll, we'll go on. I didn't want to have you guys have to listen to that compressor pumping up, but while that was pumping up, I went ahead and I lubricated my stones just a little bit with some of that oil. And I went ahead and I lubricated my cylinder with some oil. And what you got to be careful with here is that when you put this in there, you, that you make sure that when you're going back and forth, that you don't go too deep and break your stones off in the crank. So you wanna go down and make sure that your stones are in far enough to get to the bottom of the cylinder, but no further than you need to. So I kinda have the reference point right here on my bend of my uh, cylinder home to make sure that I don't go below that. You want to go 
all the way in and all the way out. But all the way in, remember, keep your eye on the mark so you don't go too deep. You don't want to go too fast because you want a good crosshatch pattern there. And then you want to check it every so often to make sure that you've removed all the marks. So we'll put a little oil in here and we'll, we'll see kind of what the damage is. But we got to keep doing that until we see this thing completely smooth and completely uh, that you want a good crosshatch pattern, meaning that the marks on the cylinder need to be like an X. So when you go down, it makes one mark going one direction. When you pull it up, it's making the other. So as you go back and forth, you want a good crosshatch pattern. And I start slow like that until we can get the marks here, the wear marks, completely gone. Once we get it to where the cylinder is completely honed, where there's no more wear in the, in the cylinder that's noticeable, then we'll go ahead and go a little faster to get a good cross hatch final pattern there. But yeah, we still got some wear here. So we'll just keep, keep on honing. But every time we gotta lubricate this thing, typically if you had a honing machine, it would be lubricating the whole time so it could just keep working at it. But in this particular case, since we're manually, we're being the machine here, by moving this manually up and down in the cylinder, we want to make sure that uh, that we keep this thing looped so it keeps cutting, and we don't want to ruin our stones. So we we put some oil in there, keep it looped. We squeeze these, push them in there. <coughs> see any more wear marks here is that starting to cut pretty good in there we definitely don't want to see any more scrapes that go up and down that were that way from the from when the damage occurred Boy, my hand just barely fits in there. So that's coming along. So what I'm seeing is my crosshatch pattern is pretty flat, meaning that the X's are kind of flat. We want to finish with a cr good crosshatch pattern. So that means I'm not moving fast enough. Uh, so I'm gonna have to probably move a little quicker, but uh, well, let's keep doing it. We want this to keep cutting. So now we're well lubricated. Put these in there again. <laughs>
more so you guys could see the uh, hopefully see the cylinder a little better and you can kind of get a better idea of what it takes to do this we want to make sure we got that all lubricated you can start seeing a, a pretty smooth pattern there there is some some wear about halfway down still and right up here at the top stroke of the cylinder so I'm hoping that we can get it all out without going too far and having a sloppy fit on the on the piston so maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna get that piston and and start to uh, check the the clearance on it after this next home here because we want to do enough to make sure that the rings can wear in good but we don't want to do so much that we need to go uh, with an oversized piston because we've already ordered the standard piston <laughs> try and do this like it fits the final <laughs> should be pretty good I guess from the looks of it then we'll take a feeler gauge to it and we'll see if that works out okay yeah that's looking pretty good now and that crosshatch pattern at that speed is looking a lot better than than the original speed that we were going you know at the machine shops they have these honing tools that they use that are machine operated and so they're very consistent this is kind of a touch thing you start getting a feel if you start easy on the speed going up and down and you look at it you'll see whether your crosshatch pattern is enough or not as if you go too fast it could wind up the other way where the crosshatch pattern is flat in the other direction so I think we're going to do a, a measurement. Hopefully I don't need more than, than what I have. So here's my piston. So this is what I have right now. Yeah, I think that's probably about all I'm willing to go. Because that's, that's right about as far as I want to go. That's, uh, yeah, that's right at five thousandths uh, of an inch. I would have liked to have had maybe three thousandths. I don't want to take out any more than that or else we're going to have some issues with this uh, uh, piston slopping back and forth. So, I think that's going to work just fine. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead now. We've got all that grimy from the stones. If you go ahead and put it together like this, you're going to have issues with, uh, with wear right away. So um, we'll get a, a clean rag. We'll get this hot soapy water. And then we just want to make sure that we get this all clean. As you can see, I zoomed it in a little bit to make sure that you guys can actually 
see how smooth that looks and, and how even that pattern looks now. There's no scratches in the cylinder at all. And so we should be good. This should work just fine. Now let's, let's just get this oiled up real good. Make sure we don't get any rusting anywhere. Since we got this wet, we're gonna put some oil in here in the cylinder to make sure we've got it well and lubed. And you shouldn't feel any more uh, rough grit in, inside the cylinder once you've got it cleaned out with water. It should feel real smooth and real clean. If you feel any, any grit in there at all, it's because you didn't get it cleaned out enough and you want to make sure that you do so okay so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and try and get this seal on on this side but before we put that seal in there uh, I went ahead and 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 add some oil right inside that bearing in there and spin that around to make sure that that bearing is lubricated before uh, we put this all together because when you put it together there won't be any oil on that bearing so If you don't lubricate it now it it may run without oil on that bearing for a little bit and may cause some problems down the road The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you put a little oil on the surface that this um, seal is going to ride on because if you don't put any oil on it then that dry rubber seal against that shaft uh, it may tear up the seal. So I just put a little bit on my finger and I, I'll just run some right in on the inside. Try not to get any on the outside because that's the rubber mating surface or seal surface that's going to have to seal up against the, uh, the housing. So if you don't do that, If you, if you get oily surface on the outside, it may not seal. And then I'm just going right around the outside of this because I don't have a, a seal driver that's long enough to go all the way around the, the uh, that's deep enough to go around and get that seal. Well, I went ahead and drove this seal in all the way, uh, almost all the way in uh, because I, I went and I checked the video that I had taken before I took this out and it was kind of all the way in there. Plus what I was watching is where the wear was on the shaft from the seal. And so, you know, once I started looking at that, I could see that it needed to go in quite a bit further. So I don't want to have any leaks. So I went ahead and drove it in to where it was originally before I took it out. So hopefully that will be good and we won't have any oil leaks there. Well, folks, I guess that's going to do it for today. Sun's going down. I'm trying to have good lighting for you all so I can get some good video. So um, we're going to have to call it quits. We'll catch you on the next one. So please like, share, subscribe, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video.